Welcome to Wood Fired Oven How To, where we explain our process for cooking our favorite recipes in our wood fired oven. Today we're making something that I have been looking forward to for a long time moho pork from the John Favreau movie Chef. For this, I'm specifically using the recipe from the Chef Show. A link to that can be found in the description below. We are first going to brine the pork overnight. For that, you'll need a large bowl or some other large container to submerge the pork in the brine. You'll need pork, obviously. We have about seven pounds of pork shoulder here. The brine will be made from orange juice. You can use fresh squeezed oranges if you want, but a jug of orange juice is just easier, honestly. Rum, rice vinegar, salt, sugar, garlic, a bunch of delicious fresh herbs, and then peppercorns. To make the brine, just pour all the ingredients into the bowl. For the garlic, I just peeled them and crushed them a little bit and threw them in the bowl and then threw in all the herbs and spices. We then take the pork out and place that in the bowl with the brine. We want to make sure to cover the pork as much as possible. So here I'm just filling up the bowl with some additional water to get it as close to the top of the bowl as possible without it overflowing. I ended up adding about three cups of water, which is almost exactly what the Chef Show recipe called for, so it worked out pretty well. Cover the bowl however you want and place it in the fridge overnight. We ended up keeping this brining in the fridge for about 14 hours. The next day, after the brine is done, we then need to marinate the pork. The marinade consists of olive oil, oranges, for their juice and zest, limes, also for their juice and zest, cilantro, fresh mint and oregano, ground cumin, garlic, salt, and pepper. To make the marinade, we chop up about eight cloves of garlic. We then zest and juice two oranges to get about half a cup of orange juice. And then we do the same thing with four limes to get about half a cup of lime juice. Next, we can start putting the stuff into the food processor. We add about half a bunch of cilantro, which is around one cup. We then add the garlic, followed by a quarter cup of fresh mint leaves and about a tablespoon of fresh oregano, about two thirds cup olive oil, one teaspoon ground cumin, and about two thirds teaspoon of salt and pepper. Lastly, add in the orange and lime zest and start up the food processor. Now that the marinade is ready to go, we can take the pork out of the brine and discard the brining liquid. Clean off the pork, place it back into the bowl and cover it with the marinade mixture. It was about at this point I realized that using my hands to spread the marinade was probably not the best idea. I then pour the orange and lime juice into the bowl, using it to clean off the marinade from my hands a little bit. Finish up by spreading the marinade evenly over the top of the pork, and then place the pork back in the fridge and let that marinate for about six to eight hours. You don't really want to let it marinate for too long because it has already been brining for about 14 hours and 24 hours seems to be the recommended limit for brining and marinating combined. To cook this pork, we're going to need the oven right around 350 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. We want to fully heat up the oven to fully saturate the bricks with heat and then let the oven cool to the temperature that we actually want to cook at. It will hopefully be right at the right temperature about six to eight hours from now, so it should line up nicely with when the pork will be done marinating. We then tend to the fire for a bit, relax, enjoy the wildlife. Cicadas are especially active this year and love hanging out on the pizza oven. And since we heated up the oven, we might as well use that heat. Today we roasted some tomatoes for salsa, we grilled some zucchini, and then we grilled some chicken that the cicada seemed especially interested in. When we're done cooking and the coals are pretty dead, we can put the door on the oven and give it time to get to the temperature we need it. We have these Bluetooth meat thermometers that work pretty well to monitor the oven temperature. And we have this little veggie grilling tray thing that can hold the thermometer in place. We place the thermometer in the tray and place the tray into the center of the oven, put the door back on, and then we can start monitoring the oven temperature without continually taking the door off. And we can go off to do other things with our day. couple hours later and we can see now that the oven temperature is a bit under 400 so we can start getting the pork ready to put back in the oven. 
The temperature will drop a little bit when we put the pork in the oven, and we are looking to cook this right around 350, so we want the temperature to start off above that a little bit for when we put the pork in. General rule of thumb I go by is that the oven temperature drops about 50 degrees when I put in stuff to roast. There's not much to do here to get the pork ready. Just place it on a roasting pan and stick a thermometer in it and it's good to go. We save the marinade and cook that in a saucepan for a bit to make a really easy mojo sauce. Outside at the oven, we clean out the oven a little bit to make room for the pork and then move the thermometer onto the roasting pan. We have two Bluetooth thermometers here. One will monitor the inside of the pork and the other will monitor the oven temperature. We just need to slide the pork into the middle of the oven and you can already hear it cooking in there. And then we put the door on, plug in the thermometers, and wait. Back inside the house, we can monitor the temperatures. The oven is almost perfectly at 350, which I'm pretty proud of. 170 is the temperature we're looking for on the pork, which we hit about two and a half hours later. Make sure you unplug the thermometers before taking out the pork. Once we get it inside, we need to let it rest a bit under some aluminum foil. And after about 30 minutes, we can finally cut into this and try a piece. This pork is good. Really, really good. We only ate a little bit of it because it was like midnight at this point, so we ended up freezing a lot of it for some future recipes. Obviously, we want to make Cubanos with it at some point which I'm really looking forward to because I love Cubanos. But what I'm really excited for is using it to make a Cuban pizza, which will hopefully be featured in my next video, so look out for that. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it.